Welcome back uh, to episode four of the QRS uh, Short Shaft. Uh, my name is Bob, better known as BAR549 on Dew Talk, world's largest skidoo forum. All right, uh, to continue where we are, I cleaned everything up, and uh, just to go back over a few things, I did measure uh, with a telescoping gauge and caliper uh, on the helix bushing and the bushing in the sheave here and we're about four and a half thousandths on both items so that's great ten thousandths maximum so four and a half uh, five uh, they're right there just like a new bushing if they these hold up very very well in your secondary uh, but uh, again uh, we did apply that tape on here to protect the bushing in the helix uh, so um, that's important to do on uh, disassembly and assembly. Now, as I stated earlier, Skidoo does mark their helixes here, 4740. You'll find a number on all of them, okay? Now, something key on putting this helix back in, they say we've marked the uh, arrow. They don't always line up perfectly, never will. And then I marked where the spring location was, okay? But uh, something important on here, there's two different areas on this helix. You see this little cutout right here? That's where you want the rollers to run, okay, in that ramp. You've got another ramp here. It's machined on the BRP. A lot of them come this way uh, from other manufacturers. Some of them are unmachined on that ramp so you don't get them mixed up. Uh, uh, so, but uh, you just want to make sure that the roller is running on this ramp here with this little catch here. This is for reverse, okay? It locks in there for reverse and you want that. If not, it's not going to perform. It's going to run very, very poorly. So just want to bring that to your attention. I'm going to adjust the camera and we're going to get together with assembly on this. <clears throat> Okay, now we did check the rollers. Again, I highly recommend you use the Skidoo rollers. There's other rollers out there. I have tried a couple different ones. I'm not gonna mention names. I've had no luck with them. I had one that broke, it took out a Helix. I had another one that delaminated of a different brand that was supposed to be far superior, made out of a composite material. Uh, those unwrapped uh, just like a thin layer of cellophane just I kept finding these little pieces and uh, a thin wrap and it was actually the roller itself uh, shedding itself and getting smaller and smaller I found the skidoo roller works very very well for the 900 okay I highly recommend it something else on this clutch if you notice right here there's some black marks okay that's from leaving your belt in it over the summer I highly recommend at the end of the season you take your belt off, okay? Uh, because it will leave etching and sometimes I've seen it really corroded up and pit it. Uh, it's not really gonna hurt it, but it's something that can be prevented, okay? Just take it off, okay? So to start with, um, we're going to get this clutch together. Slides on there, we've got an arrow, and we've got an arrow here, okay? Now our spring, um, wash the, I clean this clutch up real good, and let me take this back apart. As you can see, if you go back to our episode one, I show you how to cross hatch that, get that cleaned up. Uh, it's important that that's very clean, okay? So, um, I washed this off, but the spring was right there in that single hole, okay? Because I want to set it back to what it was, okay? So, it's just as simple as this end of the spring, doesn't matter which end, goes right in that hole, all right? And then your helix, we marked that when we took it off. We know it's in that hole. Again, you're going to want to make a note of this because when you go to clean these up, it's going to go away. So just make a note or mark it some other way. So we're going to set that, that there on top of this pin right here for this spring. OK. 
okay? Now this is not the area you want on the roller. This has actually got to be turned all the way over here to get it to line up, okay? So, need to put this on. Doesn't matter where the alignment is currently. Get your compression tool on here. Okay. Back this up, got ahead of myself. Just want to just get it on there because if you start cranking it down, you'll never get it to turn. Now your band wrench, this can be purchased at any local auto parts store. Um, <coughs> works very, very well. You don't need the other tool I got, but I'm going to use it. But you can twist that around and then hold it and then crank it down. It gets a little tough there to do that uh, by yourself, but it's it's possible to do that, okay? I just got to get my tool lined up here, get it on the right spot. Okay, there I am. Now I'm just going to run this down. Okay, now I can release it. Take it off that simple, okay? Alright, so you've got an arrow here, an arrow here, okay? Arrow's here. You're going to want to find the one on the back side, you're right here. It's not going to line up perfect. Um, so you're just going to get it to the closest area you can on the helix there. Now this needs to be cranked down a little bit more. Okay. And on these bolts, you're going to want to use 242 Loctite. Comes in a blue bottle, blue Loctite. And uh, get this cap off. You're going to want to put just a little bit. Don't have to put a whole lot on there, okay? And you do that with all four of them. I'm only going to put two bolts in this just to speed up uh, the video so I'm not boring you with assembling this whole clutch so um, we can get on uh, with the video because I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube here and some of them just seem to go on and on and on with information that's not really needed. and. That's fine, uh, but I I like to get right through and get to the meat of it. Okay, so I got that one started. I'm gonna put one right in, right across from it. Get it started, and I'll come back and put these other two in after uh, after I'm done here. But for right now, I'm just doing this just to show you. Okay, I got my quick little tool. Again, CNT sells these tools, clutch tools. And if you're doing this a lot, uh, you're going to want the tools because it uh, definitely saves you a lot of time. Okay. Again, I don't have the torque on these, I just snug them up. I've known over the years how tight to get things. Okay. And for this purpose, I'm just snug them up real quick uh, to speed the video along here. Okay, so once you got the bolts in, you got it snugged up, um, you're going to take this off. It's not going to go no place. Okay. Take that off. You can 
take the tape off that protected your bushing in there. Okay. Now as you see, the spring is back in the original location. You got your arrows. The arrow here, arrow here. Okay. And we've got the two bolts. There's two more going there obviously, but we'll get those later. Now you've got your friction washer that goes on here. A little bit of stuff in there. That goes right on there. Now on these threads, I put a little bit of anti-seize. You can use the copper, you can use the aluminum. Put it on there and then wipe it off. Just leave a very thin film on there. It just makes it a lot easier to adjust and uh, take off, okay? But I cannot stress, you can see, there's just a very, very light film of it in there, okay? And remember, this has got to be pushed on, um, and then it's just, uh, I can get it threaded on there. It's left hand threads, just that simple. Now you're gonna get it there, it stops, okay? A key thing to doing this is run it down a little bit. Yeah, whether you use the tool from the clutch guard to tighten it down or just tighten it by hand, this, otherwise the two halves are gonna be tight together and it's gonna bind when you go to check the secondary, okay? So you want a little tension to relieve off it um, so you get an accurate measurement. I make this belt or the tension tool. I have a few of these left that I've fabricated. Um, I mill them on the mill and bend them by hand and fit them. Uh, it works very good on the secondary. And it works on pretty much any clutch that has fins on the back. And it goes on there, fits on there just like that. Okay? Then I got a hole in the top where your tension gauge goes. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the camera, I'm going to move it over to the sled, and I'm going to show you how to set the tension, or check the tension, I should say. So bear with me here. We're going to try to get zeroed in so you can see what I'm doing because this is critical okay now I've also put just a thin layer of anti-seize on the threads it helps cushion it or on the splines and on the shaft make sure you don't lose your washers that are on there okay Just slide it back on there all right now you take the tension tool I've seen some people clamp a piece of metal on here with vice grips and protect the surface and pull on it whatever you want to do but the tool makes it nice Chris sells a different tool I make this tool if you want one give me a shout on do talk okay just like we had it on the bench there I showed you all right now I'm doing it old school it's just as this moves is the tension you want to check just as it moves okay I'm stuck there and you want to be parallel okay here we go it's about 18 pounds just as it starts to move 18 pounds okay some guys will do an average as it release it the tension just as it moves pull it a little farther then release it and see what the release tension is that just puts another variable in it if you do it the same way each time you're just not going to have an issue okay so I'll do it one more time real quick for you just put the tool on the back and you want to get it so you're pulling parallel you don't want it up here or way down here you just want to get it so you're pulling 
and make sure your gauge is zero and just as it starts to move about 18 pounds okay and that's good all right I'm gonna move the camera again Well, that concludes four, uh, episode four. Uh, stay tuned for future videos, um, and I hope you find these informative. Uh, the camera's flashing at me, so it's telling me the battery's about done. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on dotalk.com. Uh, my handle's BAR549. Uh, I have a build thread under there, under the 1200 section, uh, subsection 900 ACE. Uh, it's a 216 Blizzard build. Um, you'll want to read it. A lot of good information. So if you need any other additional information or have questions, please give me a call. Thank you and have a good day.